Hi, welcome back everybody. So you can see once again, I have my lovely wife here today and we are going to be discussing the book Emma. It's a lovely book here and since she's a lot more familiar with the story, I'm going to allow her to introduce it. Okay, <laughs> well, Emma is by the fabulous Jane Austen, which I'm sure everybody knows. It's about a young woman who is relatively of relatively high standing in her village and it's about her life. That sounds so boring. <laughs> it's not though. It's about um, her learning to learning how to deal with people in a way that is good. Yeah, be it, social interactions. Basically, she feels that her family is like the most distinguished family in the village. Yes. And she feels like she's the that she has an obligation, partly because of her her social standing, and partly because she thinks she's smarter than everyone else. Even though I don't think she she actually thinks that, but that's very much how she comes across in her mm -hmm. actions. Absolutely. And the book starts right when her uh, like maid, not maid, her um, governess. Yeah, her her governess. Oh. who's oh sorry, several sorry. years older than her has just gotten married, and Emma convinces herself that the reason she gets married, her governess gets married, is because of her doing. So then she basically sees it as her lot in life to set up the people in her life and, and get them, you know, to, 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 uh, to make matches for them. Emma is, I feel like I should say, she is the youngest daughter of um, a man who's, whose wife said, like, so she has no mother. This governess has played a very important role in her childhood. Her sister is away and married. So Emma, throughout the book, takes on lots of projects. Um, that's kind of like yeah. her MO, is she takes She's on all these projects. She's basically very rich and has nothing going on. So she gets bored and decides to mess with other people's lives. Basically. <laughs> but she sees it as doing like, good for the community. And she has such a sphere of influence that she is um, people like, oh, oh, you feel that way. Oh, well, then we should do this. Or, so she has a lot of influence over what people do, but it's not always the best decision. She doesn't always use her power for the right reasons. In the the, the book, there's kind of a, a larger cast of characters. But So there's Emma, and then there's her father, and Mr. then there's her, her governess. Miss Taylor. Miss Taylor. AKA and Mrs. Then, Weston. Yeah. And then Mr. Weston. Mr. Weston. Obviously. And Harriet Smith, yeah. Mr. Knightley, Frank Churchill, Jane Fairfax, Mrs. Miss Bates, and Mrs. Bates. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Mr. Elton, Mrs. Elton. Yeah, yeah. Mrs. Elton's probably one of the most obnoxious characters. I wouldn't quite put her up there with Dolores Umbridge from the Harry Potter series, but she gives her the run for the money while you're listening to her talk. Um, which, if you've read the Harry Potter series, I hated Umbridge more than I hated Voldemort. Like, Voldemort could have went won and to take, taken over the world, and as long as he killed Umbridge, I would have felt there would have been enough justice for me to still like the series. The main storyline is that Emma decides to take on... Harriet Smith. Harriet Smith, yes, thank you. And uh, Harriet Smith... Is the natural-born daughter of someone... That no one knows for sure. No so so she basically has no social standing. None. And she lives and she goes to, she's like a graduate of Mrs. Goddard's school for young girls. So she's grown up in this boarding school and now she helps Mrs. Goddard in the boarding school. So she's very, as far as like, okay, so this is Regency England, which is, um, this book was written in eight, 1816. Um, so that, it, and it's, you know, takes place current day. So 1816 is the time frame. So in that day and age, like she's like, she has nothing. She has no, no money, family, no, no prospects, money. no family, yeah. no like So nothing. no family means she has no inheritance, right. which nothing. is basically why men married women for, for the most part. Yep. And Aunt Emma takes on Harriet Smith and basically decides she's going to make her into something. Yes. And Harriet's kind of an mm -hmm. obnoxious character because mm -hmm. she's very much a people pleaser. And I don't think she's obnoxious. Yes, she is. No, I she, think she, she's... Because she's a people pleaser and not a very strong personality, when she gets with Emma, she goes along with whatever Emma says. And Emma obviously knows more than Harriet because 
unlike Harriet, she comes from a good family and lots of money and, and so on and so forth. And like when Emma and Harriet first start hanging out, Harriet is basically being pursued by a farmer, Mr. Martin. And Emma immediately decides that Harriet's too good for a farmer, even though she's not. I mean, the fact that anyone would be pursuing Harriet at this point is kind of a miracle. Technically. Yes. Um, by but, societal standards. Right. And the fact she's a noxious pushover. That's not... She's very obliging. But I don't think that makes her... It, I don't think that makes her a pushover. I think that Harriet Smith... Is, Anytime um, anyone can talk you out of being in love with someone. I would like to point out that I think that Harriet needed more convincing about Mr. Martin. I think that Mr. Martin actually needed to pursue Harriet more in order to convince her. I don't think, I don't think if you, if you can be talked out of being in love with someone, then you're probably not that in love with them. But that's another Jane Austen novel for another time. That actually is another Jane Austen novel. I'm, I don't doubt you at all. Emma actually, I think, in the long run, helped Harriet develop her own opinion by Probably, giving her yeah. more opportunities than she would have had before. Again, was Emma right? No. I don't think she was right in the way that she treated Harriet all along. But um, I do think that Emma was trying... Emma was trying to do something nice in her own kind of convoluted way. And also in this story, kind of Emma's one main character and... Harriet's kind of a main minor character, if that makes any sense. But the other I mean, I think major character okay. outside of Emma, in my opinion, is Mr. Knightley. And to kind of explain Mr. Knightley, first of all, Emma's father, Mr. Woodhouse, thought Emma was the best thing since pantaloons, or I don't know. I don't even know if they had sliced bread in the early 1800s. No. I don't think they did. Sliced bread was in the 1940s, yeah, World War II. Yeah. So he basically didn't check Emma's obnoxious, borderline self-righteous. I'd like to also point out her father is a hypochondriac in oh, yeah. in the book. He's a hypochondriac and a little bit loopy. So Emma actually takes care of him. Like yeah. he's he's an invalid and, and a hyper, or he think, he's a hypochondriac for sure, but he's also a little bit like mentally cuckoo. So yeah, like just, I, I think that he's bit. gotten um, senile. That's the word I'm looking for, senile. I don't think senile because he can remember Border everything just fine. I think he's borderline fine. senile. I think he's paranoid. Um, Maybe so. Anything that that yeah, I, I would almost a little bit of OCD. Yes. And the fact that he's lots of stuff. Yeah. Very so he so of, he thinks the world of Emma and Emma dotes on him and takes care of him like that is true. very. So I think that relationship. It's not that he doesn't check her. It's that he's like, oh, she can do no wrong. She's wonderful, and she is wonderful. Like she's a good person. She just has twisted ideas of what people should and shouldn't do. I think she's a good person. She's just a little meddlesome. Very meddlesome. <laughs> but so Mr. Knightley exactly. is an older friend of the family and actually um, uh, Emma's six, older... 16 years older than Emma. Yes. Emma's older sister married Mr. Knightley's older brother or younger his brother? brother? His brother. I don't, I don't think they, they actually say. So... I assume it's older, but... Um, yeah. So they're very connected, mm -hmm. and Mr. Knightley is one of the, the, the few people who can put up with Emma's dad for, for long mm -hmm. periods of time. Mr. Knightley is like the one person who will actually disagree with Emma. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, the best part of the book is when Mr. Knightley and Emma are disagreeing with each other, because they're obviously both intelligent people, and it's also being written like in the early 1800s, so there's a very formal dialogue going on mm -hmm. between them but it's, at the same time it's very witty mm -hmm. and like I said that to me was was the best part of the book even though Emma's my only Jane Austen I would say that the strength of, of at least Emma was the dialogue because the story itself is kind of boring like it's basically a romance novel and it's the only romance novel I've written because the uh, romance right. novels in general bore me the the idea anyways you didn't write this book that is did I say I you said it's the only romance novel you've ever written. Yeah, okay. It's the only. I would know if I was married to Jane Austen. <laughs> it's the only romance novel I've ever read, and it's yeah, and and, and like I would like to read more Jane Austen because it, it was very in, enjoyable, even though the storyline is is kind of boring. I said this in my uh, January wrap up video that I would kind of compare uh, Jane Austen's 
dialogue to like that of a Joss Whedon and the fact that it just it flows very naturally in, in the conversation. You don't have to break the story to just to insert comedy. The comedy is in the flow of the story mm -hmm. and the dialogue. Jane Austen is very good at that. Yes. And, and, and just just a little bit of a spoiler, even though it's not a spoiler because the series is so old and so many people like it. It's all and in the it, public it's, domain. Yeah, it's very obvious if you start the book, but Mr. Knightley and, and Emma, that's like the main romance story. Best couple and ever. one of the reasons OTP. that I don't like the romance genre, or I've not... You aren't attracted in, to the romance, romance genre, because you've is, never really read yeah, on it. That is true. But the romance genre, not not only in books, but in films and stuff, any almost any romance story that I've seen or read or been exposed to in the form of entertainment is is crap in my opinion is either <laughs> completely unrealistic or it's something where like I look at it and it's like why the hell should I be happy for either of these people they're obviously going to be divorced in two years however the 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 romance between Mr. Knightley and Emma is a genius romance Mr. Knightley as a character That's I respect perfect basically more than I'm trying to think if there's any other like male leads in a, in a, in a romantic sense that I respect more than Mr. Knightley even though he is a fictional character I understand that and <laughs> a lot of people get hung up over the fact that he's older than Emma but in that time period that was not uncommon it was very it was very much the norm actually and I think that it was one of those where like Emma is she was just so and he was able to take who she was, and he loved her for who she was, but he also understood that she had flaws, and he was able to, like, help her in areas where she was weak, I think. And, is... and he was able to critique her without putting her down yeah. or, or, or dissing her. He, like she said, he very much embraced who she was, but at the same time didn't put up with her crap. But it wasn't yeah. like, I'm the guy, you need to stop this because you're a dumb, no. dumb woman. It was very much... Because he did, because he also understood that she was trying to do good things and that she was a good person. Yeah. Like, he understood and respected her for who she was. He just also, um, you know, it's hard to under like, it's hard to see. He could see from other people's perspectives. Yeah. Whereas sometimes she struggled with that. But, and, and, and it's also one of... Or one of the things that I liked about the story is that Knightley's motivations. One of the things I really like about the story is Knightley's motivations mm -hmm. seem very uh, selfless. And the fact that he comes from a very old family, mm -hmm. too, and he's very rich. Mm -hmm. And as a guy, or as the male, he doesn't have to, to, to marry. He's set for life. He has the luxury of... <laughs> yeah, like, no one thinks anything of the fact that he's 35, 38, whatever, and not married. And he can basically do whatever he wants to do. Basically, there, there's no... Um, like benefit to him marrying Emma outside of the fact that he loves her, love her. and that comes across in, in the story because one of my favorite parts is there's this one scene where uh Emma and a, another one of the one of the other characters Frank Churchhouse have Churchill. been Frank, Frank Churchill Churchill Emma Woodhouse Frank yeah, Churchill yeah, yeah, yeah. okay sorry I, I'm I'm horrible with names but Frank Churchill and Emma are being kind of flirty with each other. <laughs> And Mr. Knightley believes that Emma is very much attracted to uh, Frank. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, something comes out about Frank that if Emma was was hoping to end up with Frank, would very much crush her hopes. Mm -hmm. And Knightley finds out about it and is like miles away from Emma and basically rides... He drops what he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> right, you know, drops completely what he's doing yeah. and runs Emma... Simply to make sure that she she's knows. okay. Yeah, that she's okay. Yeah, it, that's what it is. That's, I mean, that that's completely his motivation. He's not there because he knows she's emotional tur uh, turmoil and he thinks he can get laid. You know, he's not there because he thinks he has a shot at her fortune. It's just like it's a completely selfless. Yeah, and his, it's his, he cares. His, his motivation is completely out of concern for her, Absolutely. even though he doesn't think he has a shot at this point because he believes she's in love with Frank. Mm -hmm. And I, there's just, yeah, it was a very good romance, and it, the book itself was very 
funny. Well written. Yeah, very very well Jane written. Austen. Like I said, I I knew from what my wife had said <laughs> and for that, you know, she's Jane Austen is famous enough that I knew she was gonna be a good author. I didn't think that was gonna be an issue. But she surpassed my expectations. Yay. So you would definitely read her again? Yes, I would. Yeah. I, I actually I don't know when Success. I'll read her again, but I will read another Jane Austen. That was the discussion on them. Like I said, I, I rated this book a four out of five stars. Thinking back, would you rate it probably five out of five? Five out of five stars, obviously. Every Jane Austen gets five out of five stars. And Emma is my favorite Jane Austen switches depending on what phase of life I'm going through, what it just does. Ask almost any Jane Austen fan though and they will tell you the same thing. But currently Emma is my favorite. Tragically it's probably because I empathize with Emma and I get it and I sometimes connect with her in ways that I wish that I didn't. Um, but yes, Emma is my favorite Jane Austen currently. So 5 out of 5. Resounding. And mm. Knightley is perfect. So yeah, again, so 5 out of 5. I think it's safe to say we would both strongly re recommend anyone reading yes. Emma. But yes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our rambliness. <laughs> and I hope we didn't spoil the story for you too much if for some reason you've been hiding under a rock your entire life and are not familiar with it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. You can do all the three, none of the three, whatever you feel like. And we will, or I will see you next time. She may or may not be here. We'll see. It just kind of depends on, on how well she treats me the next few days. <laughs> Bye.